to put that many points against PNG at the rectangular stadium here in Melbourne. Can't wait to come back in February to play against the Melbourne Storm. But uh, I know you've got a bit of an opinion as to which England team will go on and not only do the semi-final, but potentially go on and, and win the World Cup. Who would be your England team to do that job? Well, first of all, Jim, when I, uh, when, before I, uh, I'd say what my England side would be to hopefully, you know, not just win the semi-final, but go on, for, let's say, for instance, play a, a full quality 18 minutes and maybe win the World Cup. But yeah, yesterday's game against New Guinea at times, it was pretty impressive in patches, but... Yeah. Um, but again, it just wasn't that intense enough for me for the full 18 minutes, which is convincing because we know it's going to get to the final. Australia's getting to the final. There's no two ways about that. So the fact of the matter is it's got to be now from, certainly against Tonga, we're going to have to play better yeah, yeah. for longer periods than it didn't happen against New Guinea. Yeah, at times, pretty impressive. But again, uh, the talking point is the team selection. And for mine, the team selection, certainly from 1 to 13, it's got to be. It's got to be Winnipeg at fullback who's been outstanding yeah, since he's yeah, played there. The, the two wingers have been the players of the tournament so far in Ryan Hall and Jermaine McGill. Who's your favourite out of the two? But again, oh, hey, hey mate, you can't split them. You just cannot split them because if you give them opportunities, yeah. they're going to score your tries. They're doing the job what Wayne Bennett's doing, asking them to do, bringing the ball away from their own 22 and making plenty of yards. So you can't split them in the moment. But the big talking point is quite simple, the centre position. Yeah. yeah, Callum Watkins, I tell you what, isn't he showing up what a quality centre Callum is at yeah, this moment in time? But the big talking point is why is John Bateman playing there? Wayne Bennett sees something in Bateman that nobody else has seen. If I'm honest with you, so Percival for mine would be in the centre. The halfbacks, Luke Gale is more comfortable uh, with Kevin Brown at the side of him. I'm not convinced yet at this moment in time that Luke Gale is standing up to the international level, if I'm honest with you, based Jamie. On what, from there. Based on what? Oh, well, he's just at times, he's, uh, his thought process is too slow. Right. And, what, and what I'm thinking about Luke here now, because I'm watching him quite closely, this is pretty simple. Is he still trying to impress Wayne Bennett that he's good enough to be our number seven? But at this moment in time, he is. We all know what he's done in Super League, but he's only brought one number seven. George Williams isn't going to play anymore on this tour. Certainly performance against France. So Luke looks comfortable with Kevin Brown at number six on there. So that would be my, uh, my back line. And then my, my forward pack would be Sam Burgess. I think Sam's been a little bit disappointed, to be honest with you, in this World Cup. I think yesterday he tried too hard against Papua New Guinea. Right. I think he lost three balls, a pass from away from there. So Sam certainly is a big player, needs to step up. So Sam in the front row, James Robley surely has to be the starting hooker. Well, that's the other one, isn't it? That's James Ro Listen, point. Jamie, James Robley has to be the starting hooker, not because of, uh, he can play 40, 50 minutes. He can play the 80 minutes. He makes the right decisions. His service from dummy half is excellent, but then when... He needs to scoot a look for the quick play of the ball. Roby brings us that. Roby has to be the starting hooker. James Graham at the other prop. And then in the back row, John Bateman goes from centre to the back row. Elliot White in the second row. And then uh, O'Loughlin at loose forward. And, uh, and from the bench, yeah, he'll go, he'll go with four forward. So on the bench, Alex Wormsley. Outstanding. Alex, Tom Burgess. Yeah. Tom Burgess has been very, very impressive. Ben Curry on the bench from there. And then the other... The other one, people say, well, Hodgson is hooker. Now, I wouldn't have Hodgson in my side, to be honest with you, because it's causing too much confusion. It's, when, it, when, it, when it's coming back for the second stint, it's causing too much confusion. He's getting to first man. It's too slow in his thought process, too slow in his passing game, and that's what's confusing for the half-backs and certainly uh, from Luke Gale from there. So the other, the other one on the bench... Who, who, would, who would I think about? I guess maybe stick, maybe Matt Meakin on the bench from there. But that starting lineup, Jamie, yep. that starting lineup, if we can play better for longer periods, surely it's good enough to beat Tonga. And then who knows for the full 80 minutes in, in the World Cup final against Australia, maybe it could happen. But also as well, I reckon we'll beat Tonga this weekend. I don't think there'll be much in it. I don't think it'll be a high scoring game. And I reckon England will beat Tonga on Saturday around about 18 points to 10. I think the emotional energy might have gone from Tonga personally. I've been watching against the, uh, the Lebanese. Um, and I reckon actually that England will beat them by at least 18. It's a big one. It's a big one. Mm. But I do think they'll, they'll have a, a great performance.